Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Liz and I am back again with another unboxing. Okay, this one today is the English Magic Tarot. It is done by Rex Van Wren, Stephen Dooley, and Andy Letcher. Okay, Rex Van Wren is the one who did the drawings, Steve Dooley did the colorings, and Andy Letcher wrote the book. Okay, and there is a foreword by Philip Cargom. Uh, the author of the Book of English Magic. He is, from what I was reading in the book, because I was able to read this, because I have I got this at a um, thrift store, so it was already open, although it's brand new. Um, I read the book this morning, the, for, not the foreword, the, um, well, I did read the foreword, but also the introduction, which is only like 18 pages long. And um, this Philip Cargon, which I didn't know, which is interesting, because I do have a few of his decks, at least two, he is, what's considered the starter or the author of modern English Druidry. So I was kind of intrigued by that. I, I probably read it somewhere else, but I don't remember. So I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, it's a neat deck, okay? I um, saw something online about it, and I just thought it was kind of a cool looking deck. It is done in a graphic novel style, um, which what that's what Rex Van Ren does, and although I'm I have never been one for you know the graphic novels, comic book type thing, this is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool take on it. It's also based on English magic from the King Henry the Eighth to they say the modern beginning of the modern era or something like that which is like in the 1600s it's in the book it gives you a whole introduction on it why the, the deck was created it's a nice box nice sturdy box a big box um the book is great honestly i love the writing of this andy letcher the writing is great i really actually burst out laughing out loud a couple of times because i thought it was he's got a, a comical way of writing but it's it's just well done. I like it. So this is the book, and this is do, 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 the beginning of the book. Like I said, it's about 18 pages, and then it goes in. That's the beginning of the book that I read. But it's it's honestly, it's a very easy read, and it's very informative. It talks all about uh, English magic and the characters that are in the, the cards, like King Henry VIII, uh, Guy Fawkes, uh, a few a uh, few other people like Sir Isaac Newton because he was around at that time that kind of thing so it's it's just a well done book and then I will read a few of the pages or a couple of the cards for you uh, once I go get into the cards and uh, look them up all right let's see. We'll put that there all right I can tell you right now the only thing I'm not gonna like let's see all right that's the beginning I don't like this I don't like this setup. Like I, I prefer like a single thing that holds a, or one of the boxes that holds a card. Because once these come off, those cards are going to go everywhere. I mean, this is pretty sturdy. It's going to hold it in place, but they stop getting moved around. It'll probably wind up in a baggy, you know, one of those little tiny uh, silken type baggies or something because pouch. Because I, it, this to me, I just, I don't like that at all. But that's me. Maybe other people do. I don't know. I just don't. Okay, so let's start. I'll take these off. I told you, brand new. Brand new. <clears throat> it's amazing what you can find in thrift stores sometimes. I love thrift store shopping. I find the best things in thrift stores. Okay, now let's go through these cards. Hope wherever you are, you're having a fantastic day. Oh, well, you know what? I'm noticing something. I don't know if you can see, but like this color. So all the all the suits have a different color. That's kind of cool. All right, so let's see what they are actually. Just real quick. I'm going to guess. Okay, these are upside down. <laughs> let's flip these around. Okay. All right, so the Ace of Wands is red. The ace of wands. The wand suit is red. This is going to be cups, right? Yep. Cups is blue. Swords is next, probably. Swords is gold, like a yellow mustardy gold. Honestly, I would have done it backwards, but that's me. I probably would have done 
cups as gold. No. Pentacles as gold. Yeah, I would have done pentacles as gold, but whatever. Not not my uh not my expertise. It's just in my head. I see it more that way. And the the coins are green, which makes sense because coins are earth. I guess it makes more sense that way. It's just in my head when I think coins, I think gold. So it's got two extra cards. Um, I don't know who puts out this deck. It's not Llewellyn, I don't believe, and it doesn't look like... Um, okay, it's... What, what, what is it? Wiser Books? Yeah, I don't I don't know who they are. Um, I know Los Carabao usually has a couple of extra cards, but... Okay, so this is really neat. Now, one thing I did read in in the book, and I had seen on a video that I saw about these cards, there's all this writing that you're going to see on some of these cards, and there's different kinds of writing. There's runes, there's, I don't even know what that is. There's um, Ogam, and there's like some backwards lettering and stuff. And... The book doesn't tell you what it is. You have to go dig for it yourself. And that's actually what it says. Go dig for it yourself so you can get more meaning. Mm, I understand the concept, but who's going to have the time to go try to figure out what all these letters are? I, I kind of feel like they did a disservice to the, the people who were buying the deck because most of us are not versed in all this English magic mystery, of course, because, you know, I, I actually I never even heard of specifically English magic till I even saw this deck. You know, I've heard of Druidry and Celtic magic and stuff like that. I'd never heard of that. So, I don't know. I really think that they should have included that. It would have made more sense. Um, but for those who want to go look it up, go for it. All right. So, The Fool. And this looks like Guy Fox over there. The Magician. And see what I mean? I mean, this right here, of course, is the elements. And there's some astrology things here. This, I believe, is astrology as well. But can you see it? Like there's lettering here. Now that looks like um, runes. And there's some other ones. I, don't know, I can't see it here, but I'm just saying there's going to be different things where you're going to be like, oh, what the heck does that mean? Right there. I believe that's Ogim writing. Right there. Now this card is pretty cool. Um, actually, I should have. This one here with the magician standing in front of almost a door, which would be almost a portal, is pretty cool. The style of the cards is beautiful, and I do like the uh, coloring, or the uh, colors they used in the artwork. It is really neat. And of course, the, I should have done this already. This is the back of the cards, which is neat too. Look at this, this high priestess. She looks like it's this looks like a younger version of her, so it's like facing yourself or facing your higher self. Um, going into the water, which of course has to do with emotions and intuition, it's just really neat. It's a completely different take on it. This is the Empress. Now, this Empress here, she, she looks like she's a badass, honestly. She just does. She looks like, don't mess with me. You know, but she also looks like she would be a lot of fun to be around. And, you know, we see the roses here. It almost looks like she's giving birth to all of this here. And, of course, let's see, there's more writing here. This looks like backwards writing, writing right here. Uh, solid, solid thing. Solid thing. I think that's what it says. So that I could read. The other one's not so much. Is the moon in the background. It's really neat. I like these. King Henry. This is King Henry. I know it is because reading the book, it said that he had hired a permanent fool and somebody else. I can't remember. Um, was it an astrologer? I can't remember now. So, the Hierophant. This is a completely different take on the Hierophant. I've... I don't even, I mean, I look at this, I'm not even sure what I'm looking at. So you know what? I am going to pull that out um, so we can read on it. Now, the thing, too, about these cards and what he wrote is they are different because it, he wants you to use your imagination and your intuition, read the book. But if it doesn't mean that to you, you make the cards 
mean what they mean to you. And I agree with that as well. This lover's card is really pretty and it's really cute how they're holding hands here. It reminds me of weddings now where the couples, they're not supposed to see each other before the wedding, but they'll like be, you know, behind a wall and they'll just hold hands and say a quick prayer. I like that a lot. The chariot. I love this strength card. She's she's not just taming the beast, she's riding the beast. I love it. The hermit. Now this hermit here, he's working with elemental spirits, which is pretty cool. Fortune. I love this. Um it's a fortune teller with her with her cards. It's really cool. And of can of course you got the Ogam again. I'm I'm saying it's Ogam. I'm pretty sure it is, but I could be wrong. If I am, forgive me. Justice. Look at her. The Hanged Man. Oh, about that. Death. Now this is a cool take on death, um, because clearly he's an executioner. But if you look at here, you know death is going to come for him at some point too. Death comes for everybody. I like this card. I think it's more about being uh, real and realizing nothing's forever. Temperance. Now this has almost that same feel as the um, the high priestess, but she <laughs> she's got her head in the water. That's I don't even know. I I don't even know, but that is funny. You know, I might hold that one back too because I just find that one entertaining. Okay, the devil. Typical devil. But it looks like he's on the edge of the cliff here. There's some more weird writing. The tower. I like that. I love the crows. The star. Now this is Sir Isaac Newton because I read about that in the book. And it's all about how he was a um, alchemist as well as a scientist, which alchemy has a lot to do with science. Science. Sorry about that. Motorcycle just went by. They get very loud around here when the weather gets nice. Um, so that's pretty cool. The moon. I love this moon card. This is so funny. Look at her. She's telling him to go somewhere. The uh, The bunny. It's like the bunny's taking orders from her. She's holding what looks like the moon in her hand. It could be the world. And there's a face here in this branches. It looks, I mean, I don't even know what I could come up with that, depending on how I'm reading. But I, it's just a really, really cool card. I love that card. Okay, the sun. Now, I, I just noticed now... This card here is not cut very well. Now, the cards themselves are perfect. They fit perfectly, but it looks like whenever they cut it, the die was a little off. No big deal. It's just kind of curious that that they let that go through. <laughs> Maybe that's why it was at the thrift store. <laughs> Judgment, which this looks here like one of those straw men they used to uh, do sacrifices with, I believe, back in the old, old, old days. With criminals and stuff, I think. I'm not, fan, I'm not a fan of that. Okay, the world. That's a very different world card. It almost looks like the green man, maybe. Hmm. Very different. Okay. Now, here we go. Nope. Oh, upside down. I guess I never turned it. Okay, Ace of Wands. This is a very different Wands card. It's got five hands, a helmet, a lion, well, is that, no, a tiger, and a bunch of words here. Okay, fire my spirit. Fire my spirit, what does that say? To will, okay, to will and fire my spirit. I didn't even realize they had words. Do these have words in them? No, other than the, okay, well, that's kind of cool. All right, two of wands. Three of Wands, Four of Wands, that's a cool Four of Wands, Five of Wands, I 
Oh my God, that's so funny. Look at that. <laughs> He's fighting with squirrels. Oh my God, too funny. I love it. <laughs> Little annoyances. Okay, six of wands. I like that too. Is that, is that a horse? Why does it look like it's got horns? Am I missing something here? Okay, it is a horse. Uh, okay, it almost looks like it's got horns, so I'm, it almost looks like it's a, a bull to me, but I don't think it's a bull. Oh, that's weird. Kind of hard to tell. Seven of wands. Eight of wands. That's very different. Nine of wands. Ten of wands. Mm -hmm. Page of wands. He's got a horse there. Knight of wands. Queen of wands. Now that's a different queen of wands. She looks like she's very, very busy uh, ordering things, taking care of things, ordering things, um, getting, make sure that things are in order. Hmm. Very different. King of Wands. Well, look at him. He's nice and relaxed, staring at himself in the mirror. That's funny. <laughs> I like that. Oh, they flipped over again. Okay, let's see. Ace of Wands. Now, what the hell does this one say? Okay. Let's see. Water my blood and to keep silent. Hmm. Water my blood to keep silent. That's kind of different. Two of Cups. I like that a lot. Once again, this writing. This writing in every single one of these cards, it's like, what they mean is a different story. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Well, that's a very different Four of Cups. That doesn't look like the typical Four of Cups where you seem kind of like dissatisfied or bored. That's more, to me, that looks more like you're too busy and um, looking for uh, something different. It says the school of night on here. Back upside down. Hmm. Okay. I mean, a lot of this does have to do with the English magic clearly. So some of it is stuff that somebody who probably knows English magic would pick up right away. But somebody like me who knows nothing about it, I, it might just be confusing, but the cards look very different and, but very, um, not entertaining. Uh, exciting honestly they look like they're gonna be fun to use okay five of cups not the traditional five of cups at all I don't get that same feel of uh, loss here six of cups I also don't get that same Feeling, but it's a beautiful card. I love them. I'm not going to say I don't like them. They just, they're not, it's sort of based on the Rider way, but mm, not really because the imagery is very different. Oh, Seven of Cups here. This gives me more that feel of the Five of Cups than the Seven of Cups. So when I would read with these cards, I'm probably going to read them more intuitively. I will definitely look at the meanings if I need to. But it's definitely going to be more the eight of, you know, more of reading it intuitively. Like this eight of cups doesn't look to me like you're turning away from things that don't serve you. And you're turning away from, from uh, especially emotional things that have just, you're done with. It looks more to me like tradition and this person feeling like they're stuck. Because this person feels stuck here. And if you... If you look here, there's actually, it looks like clouds back here. Is it clouds or is it cracks? It's hard to tell. So, um, I do like it though. I, I think this deck is going to be fun to read with. Nine of Cups. Now, I don't know if I would necessarily go out and specifically buy it if I hadn't seen it at a thrift store for, you know, a couple of bucks. Um... 
but it's not expensive. I looked it up online. It's like maybe fifteen dollars on Amazon. So it's not. If you like the deck, get the deck because it's really not expensive. The book itself, to me, is worth it because it was just. It's just so well done. I love the the writing style. Look at this Nine of Cups. That is very different from the traditional Nine of Cups. That's beautiful. I really love that. Look at the tenderness. Oh, I love it. Okay, Ten of Cups. Page of Cups. Actually, let me look at that Ten of Cups again. See, this Ten of Cups looks more like the regular Nine of Cups in a way. So did they... Did they invert it? Is that what they did? Because that looks more like the what would, I would consider the Ten of Cups, that kind of happy, loving thing, um, familial scene. Whereas this looks more like the, the traditional Nine of Cups. Hmm. Wonder why that is. Okay, well, it is what it is. Page of Cups. Knight of Cups. Why does he look like he looks a little crazy <laughs> look at the face he looks a little crazy okay uh queen of cups all right i don't know what's up with this queen but she does not look like a happy camper she's look like she's she looks like she's had a tough few years so is her emotions taking over and completely Ravaging her? What is going on here? You know what? Let's hold that one back. All right. King of Cups. That looks like a barber. A barber's chair to me. Okay. Air my breath to dare. All right. So these are saying what the suits mean. Um, the um, elements that are tied to the suits, which... Swords is air, um, wands is fire, cups is water, pentacles is earth. So it's giving you a little bit of something. So air my breath and to dare. It's also the thought, the mind. Okay, two of swords. Three of swords. Four of Swords, Five of Swords, well that's a different Five of Swords, hmm, typically you see the Five of Swords as a, <clears throat> as a, um, a bully or something like that, okay, this must have something to do with some English lore or, or English story, you know, the guy's holding his head, so... I would have to see what that means. Maybe I'll hold that one out and see. And I'll pick a couple from there. Six of Swords. Seven of Swords. That This gives me more the feel of the Five of Swords. Eight of Swords. Oh, I like this one. I like that one. I like that a lot. Nine of Swords. And Ten of Swords. Hmm. Okay, so Page of Swords. Knight of Swords. Queen of Swords. Here's another queen. Why do I get the impression they have an issue with the queens? They do not make them pretty at all. I don't know why. Hmm. I mean, I found some of the other cards okay but i don't know i just find that the queens are i wonder what they have to say about that queen i'm just curious king of swords ace of coins or pentacles i would typically call it pentacles but there's no pentacle here so earth my body to no it's upside down but i can read upside down and backwards actually shockingly all right two of coins Three of coins, four of coins, five of coins, hmm. 
I don't know. I'm guessing. Okay, let's see what the Six of Coins is. This to me gives me more the vibe of the five of, um, the Six of Coins typically because it looks like somebody trying to help uh, destitute mom and her child. But I, I this one is also somebody helping out. So they both kind of give me that feeling. All right. Six of Coins. Seven of Coins. Eight of Coins. Nine of Coins. Hmm. Okay, so Nine of Coins is usually a woman. I wonder why they put him there. And Ten of Coins. And usually Ten of Coins is usually a familial grouping, you know, with family and the pets and stuff. And here it looks like a woman with a bunch of suitors. Um, they're like begging her to be with her, I guess. That's, at least that's how I'm seeing it. Huh. Very different. Honestly, it's not, it's not what I was expecting. I mean, it didn't say that it was based on the Rider weight. It just said that it it did talk about the right away deck as being, you know, with the tarot and stuff. So they did their own interpretation, which is fine. Page of coins. Knight of coins. Look at that. These readings taking a sweet time. You know what? I wish I could take a month to just read. Just be somewhere, not be bothered by anyone, and just read. I would love that. Queen of coins. That's let's see at least this one doesn't look as um, downtrodden <laughs> or annoyed as the others she just looks like she's you know getting cloth to make a new dress it kind of looks like cloth and the king of coins oh look he's got a bunch of books too to know that was the beginning of the on the ace there it said to know all right so it's a nice jack I mean the the quality of the cards is nice it's a typical Thickness, it's actually a little bit thicker than normal, I would say. Um, the cards feel, they are thin, but they don't feel like they're going to like bend fair, really bad. Like, I mean, they're going to bend, but I'm talking about like uh, really bend where they leave a crease. I don't see that happening with these cards that easily. All right, let's grab one of these cards and let's see. You know what? I got to grab this queen here because I am just curious as to what they write about the queen. I think I remember hearing somebody say something about this deck that the it seemed like the people who wrote the story, I'm sorry, wrote the book and designed the cards didn't have a great relationship with women because all the queens seem to be very harsh. <laughs> Maybe they're right. Let's see. <laughs> uh, this is the Queen of Swords. Okay. I mean, the Queen of Swords could be tough. We ain't gonna lie, she could be a tough cookie. But she's usually very clever and smart and very um, uh, truthful and honest and fair. So let's see. Oh, oh boy. Let's see. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna show you the book. Only because I'm just like, really? All right, Queen of Swords. Hurt, cruelty, cutting off your nose to spite your face. Now, that is not how I see the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is very clever. She can have a sarcastic humor, but she's very smart, intelligent, um, a very fair-minded. Uh, uh, she has a BS detector. She's that kind of person. You can't pull one over on her that easily. Huh. Okay, well, let's see what else we got going on here. Description, a queen sits alone in a tower. A portrait of her as a young woman hangs on a wall behind her. Interpretation, the queen of swords looks cold, bitter, and perhaps even a little cruel. Whereas in her portrait from years ago, she's vivacious and full of the promise of a life ahead. Something has happened to her along the way. Life isn't a fairy story. We all have to bear sickness, bereavement, and heartache. Each leaves its trace. We cannot choose that life we cannot choose what life throws at us, but we do have the choice of how to respond. We can move through life with compassion, laughter, and humility, or we can turn our hurt outwards and try and make others suffer as we have. That's what's happening here, and it's tragic to see. 
I'm afraid I know several people like this. Okay, I know people like this too, but <laughs> I don't see this queen this way. Queen, the queens generally are pretty, unless they're reversed, they're pretty in control of their character um, traits. So, okay. The queen is very stuck. She's locked in a tower of her own creation, but the key to her release hangs on the wall behind her. She can't ever go back, and she can remember that youthful spark of life and the boundless joy it brings. But she can remember that youthful spark of life and the boundless joy it brings. Reading. You are stuck in a hurt place, locked up in a tower. Put the sword down and take a good look at the portrait at, on the wall. Remember how it felt before. If the card is, re is reversed when you are being cruel, trying to make others suffer as you have. I'm sorry. When the card is reversed, then you are being cruel, trying to make others suffer as you have. Whatever the injustices of life, Hurting others will only make you feel worse. All right. I do not see the Queen of Swords as cruel. In reverse, in the character traits, yes. Especially with her mouth. Um, she has, she's got a sharp tongue. You know, she is the Queen of Swords. But upright, I don't see this Queen. I mean, I see this, this picture here. It does seem like this person is not a happy person. But I honestly, nah, I'm not, I am not loving that description at all. At all, at all. Let's see what the Queen of Cups, let's see what kind of misery the Queen of Cups is feeling, the poor thing. I mean, most Queen of Cups I know are the most gentle, loving people. They have good hearts and they have um, so much empathy for people. They feel other people's pain so easily. So let's see. Oh, oh well, boy. <laughs> I'm going to crack up. <laughs> I really, I'm wondering if these guys or the guy who wrote this and these guys who drew these pictures really are not, um, really have issues with women in general. My goodness, look at that. Compassion, self-loathing, and insobriety. All righty. Okie dokie. <laughs> Description, a queen sits in a cold throne. She looks worn out by life, cold to the marrow. Interpretation, this poor woman seems very lost. Her seat seems, her seat looks more like a prison or a torture device than a throne. That steaming cup is just her first drink of the day. Whoa, betide her poor servants as the day continues. Someone will be in for a tongue lashing. She's the queen of hearts and her favorite words are off with his head. We all know someone like this. They are extremely difficult to be around, shooting out barbs at the slightest provocation. And yet, behind their walled exterior is a small voice crying for help. A withered tree in the background still bears fruit. There is always hope for redemption. When someone ends up like this, you have to ask compassionately why. Some dreadful hurt must have been inflicted, a blow from which never she never recovered. She numbered the pain in the only way she knew how through drink. She numbed the pain in the only way she knew how through drink, and yet the pain remains. The Queen of Cups invites us to put down the bottle, hold our tongues, and rediscover the compassion in our hearts. If you do so, you will be wise beyond measure. Reading. Someone who feels intensely but who has suffered in life. Compassion is a response to the hardships of the world. If the card is reversed, then someone may be acting with cruelty. The card invites us to respond kindly and to reach out to people who have been hurt. Okay, I like this description here on the reading part. I do not like the description of this queen at all because this that is not generally what the queen stands for. Uh, and and here's the thing, I'm looking I'm looking at the the male counterpart, which would be the king, and it goes to balance emotions contained through self discipline. Well, the queen of cups is also balanced and has it, and her emotions are contained through self discipline. So I don't know. I'm finding um, I find anything a little bit disturbing, you know. Right here, I'm going to just read this part here on the king. The card suggests self-mastery and self-discipline and containment of emotions. If it is reversed, then the anger or strong emotions may be getting out of control. Rein them in. Hold them tight with those big fists. Get the water back in the cup. Be still. Mm. Okay. I will use the deck. And honestly, I know, you know, maybe I'll use it with spe very specific people. But I'm thinking that that's just, uh, I don't know. I just, mm, that's rubbing me the wrong way. It really is. Okay. 
Let's see. You know what? The other one that's very different to me is this hair fan. And I'm already over here at 35 minutes. I'm sorry. It's just I'm <laughs> I'm kind of intrigued by this whole queen thing. You know, I really, really am. So the Hierophant. All right. The Hierophant is down further. All right. All right. Ecstasy, Divine Contact, Breakthrough. Now, this is the Hierophant card, which I, I'm just, like, blown away by it because it doesn't look anything like I would even consider to be a Hierophant card. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. It looks like... A magician conjuring up animals or something that's kind of what it looks like to me so description a priest stands with his arm raised in a state of divinely inspired ecstasy or bliss animals surge around him he roars to the sky interpretation a hierophant is someone who manifests divine and traditionally the card depicts a pontiff or priest to many modern sensibilities priests may seem a little dis desiccated less interested in manifesting divine than in maintaining social order through enforcing religious dogma the hierophant in disguise wants to restrict or even deny us access to the magical realms there's an obvious resonance with the emperor they're both old gray father figures telling us what to do the hierophant of the english magic tarot could not be more different i agree there we may not know what rituals our hierophants been doing what spells he's been conjuring or what plant allies he's been taking but he's certainly broken on through the other side rules and doctrines be damned he's taken the left hand path and sought out the divine directly his reward is to be plunged into the a, into the shamanic realms power animals churn around him you feel like he could bend the world in old english they would have called him wad mad furious possessed by a god if the magician is all about acquiring skills and learning the magical arts, I'm sorry, if the magician is all about acquiring skills and learning the magical arts, then the Hierophant is all about moving beyond mere technique. He no longer practices magic. He is magic. I know the fe that feeling from playing music. Suddenly the doubts fall away. Your fingers move if you, if propelled by some, as if propelled by some external force and the music streams through you. I live those moments. I live for those moments. The Hierophant may indicate the need to find a spiritual teacher. Let's see, I'll bring it up close here. Um, the Hierophant may, need, may indicate the need to find a spiritual teacher, but I think speaks more about trusting yourself and your own ability to find magic. If, you're, if you haven't already, why not journey to find your power animal? Re reverse. The card speaks of the influence of corrupt spiritual authority. Have you fallen under the spell of a guru? If so, leave. I agree with that, honestly. I think we have to find our own way in a lot of ways. I think it's great to talk to spiritual people and um, connect with spiritual people, but I don't think we should ever give anybody that power where they speak for us and we are... Um, beholden to doing their bidding i i agree with that a lot okay so here you have it it's a beautiful deck i do like the style of it um i'm just thrown off by the queens i honestly think that the queens are getting a bad bad rap in this deck and i don't know why i read the i read the whole introduction and they mentioned nothing about the queens so if it comes off that they don't like women um, by their description and their uh, drawings of them, that's on them because that's the feeling I'm getting is they just, they've had some issues I think with some uh, ladies because the queens in my mind do not represent that. Unless they're in reverse, yes, they can have those attributes, but that's queens, queen, kings, men, women, and everything else in between. All right, my friends, thank you so much. I am sorry this has gone so long, but this uh, deck is definitely interesting. It's a definitely interesting deck, and I think if you get it, I think you will like it, but just be aware that the queens have a... Um, <laughs> they have a different take on the queens in this, in this deck, all right? Blessings to everyone. Let's all be kind and compassionate to each other. Have a fantastic day.